You know, growing up, it's, uh, it was really hard for me. In sixth grade, I was introduced to uh, being part of a, a gang, and I actually got my first tattoo when I was a sixth grader. You know, everybody always tries to fit in somehow, some way. But it also kept me away from like my family, kept me away from school. Uh, I didn't focus on school. I would skip school all the time. It was just not leading me the right way. It introduced me to a lot of uh, drugs, you know, a lot of alcohol. But at that time, I thought it was cool. Um, I became a young parent when I was an eighth grader. In 2009 of April, I couldn't do it anymore because I had my kid. I told myself that I'm not gonna be part of the game anymore. So I stepped up to them and let them know that I'm out. I started being involved in school, and in, in my community, and at church. And I'm also working full time as well right now. It's very challenging for me, but I feel like I have the ability to overcome this challenge. I picked myself up from a, a 0 0.8 up to about a 3.8. I played varsity volleyball. Uh, I was captain for both years. Starter, played outside hitter to become what you really are. It's like a volleyball match where you, how you play in a match determines who you are. You don't give it your all out there and that's how you get the loss. But when you live your life and you give it your fullest and you do what, everything that you can to pursue your dreams, that's where it gets you. It also teaches us about how to be leaders. You know, we, we, we need mentors that, you know, can meet with our students. They told me that that's not possible. We cannot find, you know, hundreds of people to be mentors for Fresno Unified. And I said, how is that not possible? It shouldn't be something where, where you just do it as a job. It should be something that you have a passion for, to help students. And I told them, told them um, straight off the bat, and I said, you know, if you can't find hundreds of people, I'll volunteer to be one of them. You know, we ourselves on our own campus can be peer mentors to those who have given up on themselves and even those who their teachers have given up on them. We need to let them know that we're doing our part, that we have not given up on them, that they can walk with us. Despite the fact of of what life that person has gone through or, or how that person is living now. You know, as you tell them your story and as you communicate with that person, that's where you step in and you say, you know, don't give up, you got it. When I began going to high school my freshman year, I was really excited and the first semester my classes seemed easy and I was passing every class. But as I continued with high school, I realized that I started having a comprehension problem with myself. I was having to turn in my assignments late because I either wasn't understanding the instructions or the assignment wouldn't click with myself. And I had to find people who were able to teach me like what the teacher was telling us. That way I was able to understand the assignment. And teachers thought that I was just being lazy and that I didn't want to do my work and I was just a typical student who just wanted to sit in class. but. That wasn't a story for myself. So every school year when I meet new classmates, I see so much potential and talent in them. And I always ask them, like, what do they want to do in life? What is their career goal? And most of them always say, well, I don't know, just work at the swamp me with my family, find a job at the mall, or perhaps just look around in their community and see what kind of jobs are to offer. I asked them, well, have you ever thought about like being a doctor or a social worker or a lawyer? They just look at me with a weird face because they feel that nobody has ever mentioned that to them. Like they make it seem like just because we're in a low income area, we're all going to end up working at McDonald's. So that's what they push towards. Like the students don't have the influence of, you know, if you get your bachelor's, this is what you could be doing. Most teachers don't live in the same area as their students. There's a lot of students that I know who, you know, they go to school and like they just want to learn and get their assignments and hear, hear the teacher give their lesson. But sometimes they catch their teachers in a bad mood and that draws away the students from the classroom. And they want to go somewhere where it's a positive environment, where they're happy, where they're away from problems. Because sometimes there's students who go to school because they're trying to get away from the problems at home. But once more problems are brought in during school, they feel like, you know, I'm just stuck in a box with problems. They want the teachers to be open and 
in a positive attitude, like I said, so that way the students have a positive attitude as well. Show them that, you know, you care about what's going on around you and you care about yourself. Be the example for somebody because although you think you're possibly not a role model, no matter what, there is someone looking up to you. And for you to show someone that getting a higher education and graduating is really important, that encourages one more person to graduate.